N I L S U. N I L S U. You know, it, 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 it's great. It fits just like N F L S U. You know, N I L S U. Sounds sounds great. You know, but came under a lot of criticism up through this 2022 signing day. NILSU simply doesn't have the cash to compete with AM. NILSU simply is behind on everything and lacking innovation. Even Billy Napier and Florida are way ahead on NIL. On NL, NIL. Unless you are way off on NIL, okay, okay, that might that may have been so, you know, in the lead up to 2022 signing day, and we lost, you know, guys such as Denver Harris, Jacoby Matthews, guys that we probably would have signed in any other Trevante Citizen as well, you know, any other circumstance, but guys who really wanted to come to LSU. But when the pr- when the price was was said, when the price was given, when the price was right, that that price could not be matched by LSU. Only one player could LSU really reach those levels of spending uh, as far as NIL this cycle in in Kelly's first first debut cycle. That was Harold Perkins. That was where the need was most. Even just by virtue of LSU picking Perkins over over Jacoby, he was going to go with Texas A&M as well. But A&M had the bigger price. He was he was going to go, and that was not completely his decision. That was the decision from his family, and that's the sad, 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 sad truth here. But LSU are you know. <laughs> We're, we're school people want their kids to go to, a school where players want to go to. But when the money is so high, when, when their favorite coach, you know, like Coach Ordron leaving, you know, he's going, Aaron Anderson, he's he's leaving. You know, when, when all these headlines are in the news, you know, all this turbulence and stuff with, with Title IX and transfers and opt-outs, you know, we lost some players during that, during that sad time, but... Now, with Brian Kelly, with a renewed, settled, in-your-face, aggressive staff, experienced staff, led by Frank Wilson, you know, Frank Wilson is going to be so key to us on that recruiting trail locally in Louisiana, in Houston. And then you've got Brian Polian, who's just going to help us nationally, big time. Joe Sloan's going to help us in Louisiana as well. Cortez Hankton. That guy can work both coasts. He can go coast to coast and home in Louisiana. And the same thing with Brad Davis. He can be national and local as well in his recruiting. When you look at all of this just around LSU, this staff where we're getting analysts who are former head coaches, you know, uh, there's something special brewing at LSU. And, you know, many have been very critical. Where's these changes at LSU? Where's Brian Kelly at LSU? Where's L- This shit takes time to be put in well, to be, to be done well, to be implemented correctly. And I got to be honest with you, the, the speed of which LSU, you know, under Brian Kelly are riding the ship is pretty incredible. It shows you that Brian Kelly identified very quickly and understood everywhere where Coach Ed Orgeron failed and said, we're going to do that, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, we're going to fix this, we're going to do that. And he has just gone down the list one by one by one and has completely turned to 180 on a lot of those issues. And now with NIL, that's going to be that was probably going to be the last one that Kelly was going to focus on. We already had our class fortified. Now we just needed some cherries on top. And in order to do that, we only had a budget enough for one guy. Was it going to be Jacoby Matthews? Was it going to be Harold Perkins? We knew it was going to be Harold. He went, sealed the deal for Harold, bam. But moving forward, the NIL, you know, NILSU night began on the night of National Signing Day. 
only moments after Jacoby Matthews said, hey, I, I don't care what efforts are being made locally. I'm going to... I'm going to leave. I'm going to go to a &M. You know, when that signing day, you know, the night of that signing day, when that NILSU meeting took place, there was a lot of, a lot of local LSU media, local LSU small businesses, a lot of different, a lot of different people who were just involved in wanting to be invested in LSU and help LSU win games by, by keeping the best athletes in, in purple and gold, wearing purple and gold. And what you saw was, was a type of uh, strong effort, is creative effort, where those those gr the groundwork is being laid right now for that strong future. You know, maybe the groundwork w was laid for Alabama's or Texas A&M's NIL future a while ago, before the NIL deal was at least down on the table when it was legal. LSU obviously were late to that train. But right now, I'm, I'm loving it because on Friday, LSU were announced to be working with Fanatics and partnering with one team to do the group licensing to make jerseys customized and with the names and likenesses on the back of those jerseys of LSU, ta LSU talented athletes. High-grade LSU Tigers on the back of those jerseys. And the first team in college football to actually compensate their players for their name, image, and likeness on the back of those jerseys and the sales of those jerseys will be LSU partnering with Fanatics. Is that brilliant or what? It's just right under the nose of every college football program. While they're all dealing with this and with that and trying to do sponsorships of this and that, they completely miss the whole thing because of their greed. None of these college football programs are ever going to allow the players to make money off of them unless they're going to be forced to. But when LSU opened the Pandora's box and said, we're going to, to let our players finally make money off of the big sellers, the jerseys, that opened the Pandora's box now. Hugest, one of the hugest moves in the NIL so far after, you know, Bryce Young's $1 million entry and stuff like that, of course, with Alabama. But, I mean, you know, Texas A&M's number one greatest of all time ranked recruiting class. But now LSU have moved quickly by becoming the first college program to allow and to you know, stipulate directly that their players will be compensated directly for their value, for their worth. It is, it is a big deal that is going to do a lot of good things for LSU, a lot of good things for the local community, a lot of good things for the players themselves. I see it being a win-win across the board here. And it's something that's going to help LSU going forward. Very much so. NILSU is up and running. 